What if you don't need to live in pain and suffering? What if you could give up your karma and have a life of abundance and joy? What if you could start creating magic and miracles that you never thought were possible? Get ready to listen, share, and experience the magic that is you. Now, here's the host of Creating Abundance with Ease radio show, Dr. Helen Gitlovich. Welcome, I am Dr. Helen Gitlovich on Creating Abundance with Ease. And today, our show is Who is Right? And what if being right is overrated? And what if actually holding you back? Right is just another point of view. Let's talk about what's actually important to create your life, to create the life you desire instead of being right. Before we go to the show, I just want to say for people who don't know me, I'm a medical doctor by education. I was born in Russia, came to US when I was a teenager, um, went straight to college, medical school, became a family doctor, and at age of 37, ended up with open heart surgery uh, from stress, from uh, kind of like creating my life, not from fun, but from obligation. And I was always searching for different reality, different tools. And 10 years ago, I found Access Consciousness. 25 years ago, I found uh, Akashic Records. And since kind of like last, I would say, especially 10 years, I've been creating my life from joy creating from consciousness, creating classes, creating private sessions around the world and online right now because of uh, COVID. With all of that, people, I could see people's lives changing with the tools. So the more I change myself, the more I can see the tools work, not just for me, for other people. So with being right, I remember when I was, like people say, when I was growing up, like when I was young, um, a few people asked me, do you wanna be right or do you wanna be happy? And that stuck with me because I always would say, no, I wanna be both. I wanna be right and I wanna be happy. Saying that, I wasn't happy. I was trying to prove that I was right. I had very fixed points of view about what's right, what's wrong, what's moral, what's amoral. And of course, things were not going my way. With my practice, I was overwhelmed. Yeah, I was trying to prove how right I was. I didn't know I I was proving it because I thought I was doing the best I could. I remember life and death situation. I had a girl who had cancer and who was dying, who was actually choosing to die. She was recreating her cancer constantly. Um, It was her, I believe, fifth or sixth chemotherapy uh, treatment. And I think about six or seven radiation. And I'm not talking about sessions, I'm talking about actual sets. And she was going for bone marrow, after as an end result, she was in a coma because she didn't have any blood left. Chemotherapy and radiation killed her body pretty much. It killed her liver, it killed all the organs. Cancer was gone too, but she was slowly dying. Being young and having investment in a way that I wanted everybody to be alive and healthy. I couldn't let go of her, even that she was begging me. I didn't know at that time, but now looking back, as you know, hindsight vision is 2020. I could see she was choosing to go, but the right point of view or my point of view that I decided was right because she was so young she was 26. She was six months before her wedding. 
with a wonderful fiance who loved her, she was supposed to survive this and thrive. And the older physician said, let's put the plug. And I'm like, no. So for another two weeks, the girl was suffering on the machine. I'm not sure if she was suffering. She was in a coma. She never woke up and eventually she became brain dead. So who is right? Was I right trying to push myself and push everybody to pull her out of something that she was in desire? Or was she right? In reality, there is no right and wrong. There is only what you choose. Choice is something that we forget. We're always trying to make the decision. We're always trying to decide what's the right choice, what's the right decision. And even if it's a wrong one, we're still trying to prove it's right. There is such a twist. It's all about decisions and judgments and conclusions where it's all about just being. What if it's not about being right, but about being happy? How many of us are not choosing happiness? Not choosing joy to make ourselves right and to prove our rightness. Look at your life. Usually I don't ask people to look at the past. Because when you look at the past, you create the future based on the past. But yet there is a lesson to learn in the past. Um, so if you look in your past, how often the things that didn't work out were the result of you trying to be right and making another person wrong? How often did it lead to the disasters, problems, and something you couldn't even solve because you were stuck in the point of view? And what is a point of view? It is a point of view. Like you're looking at something from just one perspective. And it's just not metaphor. It's truly. When you look from a certain point of view, you see only not even one-sided uh, thing, but it might be just a tiny sliver of what this thing is. Um, remember that joke about three blind sages when they came to an elephant? It can be any object, any animal. One was holding, let's say, a tail. And the other one was holding the leg and the other one was touching the body of an elephant. And there could be other people looking from other perspectives. And when you ask them, one would say, oh, this is just like a snake. Elephant is just like a snake. It looks like a snake, it feels like a snake. It's thin, it's brown and it's long. The, the other one would say, no, 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 it's a column. It's, I can hug it, it's big, it's sturdy. And the third one would say, no guys, it's a wall. I cannot find the beginning, the end, it's just solid surface. Neither one of them is wrong, but it's only a small percentage of truth. It's and especially if we have a fixed point of view, if we decided we cannot move from that point, we cannot see anything that doesn't match that point of view. It's like looking through a little tube. Uh, and if you see me, I need my fingers like a little hole and looking through that. So anything outside that tube does not exist. And if that tube also has a colored glass, we also see it through the perspective of the colored glass. 
Um, another good joke about, as you know, in every joke, there is part of a joke. And I love telling that story about the couple that moved into a new house and the wife was looking outside their windows and saw a woman doing her laundry and always complaining that the woman doesn't know how to do the laundry because it was dirty. Until one day, it wasn't dirty anymore. And she's like, oh my God, she learned how to do laundry. And the husband said, uh, you know, darling, I woke up early today and I wash our windows. So basically, if you look through the dirty windows, everybody's laundry is dirty. Everybody's stuff is bad, evil, wrong, because you're looking through the perspective of your own judgments. And those judgments not allowing you to be aware to see what's in front of you. So who is right? The person outside your judgments that you don't even see their perspective or you who are looking through the dirty windows or touching only one part of the elephant and swearing that's what it is and proving and trying to make other people to come to your perspective instead of just moving around, just turn, just come from the side look from the top, look from the side, look from the bottom, look from the right, look from the left. In the old time, left was considered evil, wrong, right was considered good. If the person was left-handed, that person was considered evil and belonged to the devil. And that was a judgment. Were they right <laughs> from the perspective of today? Of course not. It's just the way the brain works. Some people are right-handed, some people are left-handed. But if the point of view is the left-handed is wrong, what happens? They might be killed in the old time. They might have considered witches and burned at the stake. How many of you have been burned at the stake just because you were different in the prior uh, lifetimes? And now you swear never to do it again. And it's time for our first break of the show. And you've been listening to Creating Abundance with Is with myself, Dr. Helen Gitlovich on Inspire Choices Network. And when we return, we'll continue discussing more about what's right, what's wrong, what's good, what's bad, or is it? And we will be right back. Many of us live our lives based on karma, on the past, and all the unfinished business in our lives. What would you choose if you did not have karma, or if you could choose what you desired instead? By tuning into Creating Abundance with Ease radio show with Dr. Helen Gitlovich, you'll receive tools and inspiration you can use to create the abundance in your life. You are an infinite being with infinite choices. Are you ready to have ease with creating abundance? Listen for Creating Abundance with Ease radio show every Wednesday at 12 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 11 a.m. Central, 10 a.m. Mountain, and 9 a.m. Pacific on InspiredChoicesNetwork.com. Are you a subject matter expert? Are you here to share your expertise with an audience waiting to hear from you in only the way you can deliver? Are you ready to have your voice amplified across the airwaves? Inspired Choices Network has a global radio platform streaming to millions of people across the world. Professionally produced and supported by an accomplished team every step of the way, you can broadcast from anywhere in the world knowing your voice matters and we ensure it is delivered with ease and efficiency. Eager to hear your message, the world awaits. Contact us today to become an Inspired Choices Network radio host. Email become a host at inspiredchoicesnetwork.com. 
This is the Creating Abundance with Ease show with Dr. Helen Gitlovich. To participate in the program, join our live studio audience in our chat room at inspiredchoicesnetwork.com. You can also make the choice to ask or comment by email by sending to helen.g at att.net. Now, back to the program. Welcome forward, everyone. I'm Dr. Helen Gitlovich on Creating Abundance with Ease. And today, our show topic is who is right? Before we went uh, on a break, we were talking a little bit about the points of view. Because if you have a judgment <clears throat> and the point of view, you pretty much cannot even see what's not in front of you. What's kind of like, it's just like a horse running a race and it has blinders on. Uh, so it has this thing that prevents the horse seeing the sides. Like anything that kind of like on the right or the left, the horse cannot see so it doesn't get distracted. And that's considered the right way to run the race because this way the horse is so focused on running forward that it's not going to be distracted from its target and it will win. So how many of us are actually like those horses with the blinders on, see only what's in front of us, no matter if it's good for us, bad for us, I've done that. I've been that race horse. And I won. I had amazing practice. I had the family. Um, I didn't have to put in five kids. I had one child. I had a house, well, maybe not a white picket fence, but something else. And I had pets and I had all of that. Did that make me happy? And that brings me to where we started. Would you like to be right or would you like to be happy? And whose life are you living? That's another thing. Because a lot of times when we grow up and people ask, what would you like to be when you grow up? And we choose. And at that moment, if it's a good choice, according to this reality, people say, oh, that's wonderful, that's great, yes, 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 yes. So the child decides, and I'm specifically saying decides, not chooses, decides that's the right choice. When I was growing up, I was saying, I will be a doctor. Though my mom decided that that's the wrong choice. And we had a lot of conversation about that. Don't do it, don't do it. But being a humanoid, and if you've taken bars and the uh, foundation, you know the difference between humans and humanoids. I'm not going to talk about that here. Uh, you can find out more on accessconsciousness.com. Uh, but being humanoid basically means that um, I'd like more for me than... Um, average person and if somebody tells me to do something I'll do the opposite so when I was told not to be a doctor I chose to be a doctor and that I've decided is the right choice for me that and I was proving that it was right choice until I almost died it took me literally coming close to the death um and seeing what I'm creating to start choosing happiness instead of being right. Even then, I still argued and proven that there is a right choice and a good choice and a perfect choice instead of wrong choice. There is not. It's about choice. Choice cannot be right or wrong. Choice only can be choice. What will it create in the next 10 seconds? And if it's not working, let's choose something else. When you're working with the right decision, you're proving that right decision has to be. And even if it kills you, and I'm a good example, it almost killed me. So what if we stop? What if we actually start looking at the rightness or the wrongness and 
start looking at what makes us happy, what creates joy in our lives. One way of choosing it is to recognize that are, we are much bigger than this reality. I like doing expansion exercise and let's do it right now. We have a few minutes before the break. So if you're not driving, you can close your eyes or don't close your eyes. Um, for years I was doing Zen meditation where you actually don't close your eyes when, when you meditate. You make a soft focus you're actually trying not to focus on anything. And that's somewhat a metaphor in life. Instead of focusing, instead of having blinders on, what if we actually see everything? And that's my invitation right now. So if you drop your barriers and just expand from your heart, um, the way access consciousness is doing it, is a little different than Akasha crackers and maybe Zen meditation, maybe something else. The way I do it, maybe a combination of all of them, maybe some of it, maybe it reminds you of something. And again, there is no right and wrong way of doing it. It's just the guidelines, maybe guided meditation. So just feel your body, like feel the butt if you're sitting on, feel your feet, plant it on the ground. If you're laying down, just feel your body on the bed or couch, wherever you are. Maybe put your hands on your stomach, on your thighs, and just allow your breath to guide you. Take a deep breath in and just notice your breath going in through your mouth, through your trachea, into your lungs, and breathe out the air from your lungs, through your trachea, through your nose or the mouth, how you, you breathe. And actually on the next inhalation, feel all that air having energy that goes through your body, through your every cell in your body. And allow that energy when you're inhaling, cleanse it. And when you're exhaling, take all of it that's not benefit. Maybe you decided it's right. Maybe you decided it's wrong. Doesn't matter. Just breathe it out. And with each inhalation, breathe in maybe gratitude, maybe love and expand that from your heart. Maybe expand it a few kilometers, few miles around you, make yourself like a little sphere of energy and expand more, keep expanding it a hundred miles, thousand miles, million miles. Make yourself as big as the planet, as a solar system and make yourself as big as the whole universe. Yeah, like that. And from that perspective, look at this reality of your life. What is bigger, you or this reality in your life? Look at all those right points of view you have. How small are they right now? Tiny, right? They're literally tiny little things that you cannot even see from that perspective. But from that perspective of being expanded, the whole universe is just a playground. What if you look at everything in your life as a playground, not as something where you have to achieve something, not where you have to prove how right you are, how good you are, how wonderful you are. What if you're wonderful no matter what? What if you're just by being that marvelous being, you are 
and you can choose joy and happiness. What if that being right is totally overrated? Look at the, and we have a wonderful tool in access consciousness, light and heavy. Whatever is light is true. Whatever is heavy is a lie. Look at the moment when you have like a point of view that you've decided is very right. Like really look at one of your points of view that are right. Is it light? Not so much. Because again, right is a point of perspective. It's a point of view. Because if somebody looking at the same thing from a different perspective, they say you're wrong and I'm right. It's about everything in life. Somebody, uh, I love the superstition in Russia, in America, um, or depending on the culture. If a black cat crosses your path, it's a bad luck. I think some people even think it's bad luck for seven years. In England, if a black cat crosses your path, it's actually a good luck. In a lot of cultures, it's a good luck. If you see a black cat, it's a good luck. If you see a black cat, it's a bad luck. Who's right? But if two people of two different cultures, it's literally they are arguing about the same point of view from different perspectives. What if there is no right and wrong? What if a black cat is just a black cat? What if a black cat is, what if a cat is just an animal that gives you love and a lot of attention? What if it's that simple? What if superstitions are just superstitions? They're not right or wrong. It's just what you believe in. And you can choose your superstition. I remember um, like when I was growing up, my grandma was very superstitious. And she's like, don't wipe the table with a paper. Don't do this. Don't do that. Don't do this. And eventually, I was like afraid to do anything because everything was a bad luck. Now, I'm pretty much looking at that. It's like, okay, is it light? Nah. Okay. It's not true for me. And it might be true for somebody else. There are certain superstitions that I bought so deeply that I'm not giving up yet. And people say, yeah, but it's only superstition. You can give up. It's a choice. What if you choose to be right or to be happy in the moment? What if in some moment being right is works for you? Again, there is no right and wrong in choosing right and wrong. Huh. And it's time for our second break of the show. And when we return, we'll talk more. There is a couple more parts of the show. And you've been listening to Creating Abundance with Ease with myself, Dr. Helen Gitlevich, on Inspired Choices Network. And it's time for some commercials. We'll be right back. Many of us live our lives based on karma, on the past, and all the unfinished business in our lives. What would you choose if you did not have karma, or if you could choose what you desired instead? By tuning into Creating Abundance with Ease radio show with Dr. Helen Gitlovich, you'll receive tools and inspiration you can use to create the abundance in your life. You are an infinite being with infinite choices. Are you ready to have ease with creating abundance? Listen for Creating Abundance with Ease radio show every Wednesday at 12 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 11 a.m. Central, 10 a.m. Mountain, and 9 a.m. Pacific on InspiredChoicesNetwork.com. Magic and abundance are everywhere. 
What if you could tap into abundance and start creating your life with complete and total ease? Working with Dr. Helen Gitlovich will give you exactly that, total ease in creating abundance in your life. Dr. Gitlovich creates classes all over the world, both in person and online. She works with you to create abundance with your money, with your body, with your relationships, with all areas of your life with total ease. Connect with Dr. Helen Gitlovich at creatingabundancewithease.com. Her contribution in your world will be a noticeable gift in a very short period of time. How wonderful would it be to carry your favorite Inspired Choices Network host with you throughout your day? Well, now you can. Inspired Choices Network now has its very own mobile app. Our free app offers live streaming shows along with thousands of podcasts and TV episodes. Our shows cover a wide variety of topics. Whether you're waking up with us, carrying us through the day, and taking us to bed with you, we're always here for you to enjoy. We're easy to find. Just search for Inspired Choices Network in the Apple App Store or Google Play Store. This is the Creating Abundance with Ease show with Dr. Helen Gitlovich. To participate in the program, join our live studio audience in our chat room at InspiredChoicesNetwork.com. You can also make the choice to ask or comment by email by sending to helen.g at att.net. Now, back to the program. Welcome forward, everyone. I'm Dr. Helen Gitlovich. I'm Creating Abundance with Ease. And today, our show topic is who is right? And again, who is right, who is wrong, who is at fault, all of that. Uh, in the first two parts of the show, we were talking about that it's all about perspective. It's all about point of view that we've decided that we have to hold on to. It's that binoculars that we're looking through that not allowing us to see anything outside of that point of view. So what if instead of that, we actually chose to take off our blinders, to let go of points of view, to start choosing happiness and joy. Who would we be? And then uh, I worked with a lot of people over the years uh, or played with them through classes, through private sessions. And a lot of people, when you start peeling those layers of the rightness, of the judgments of all those points of view, there is almost that fear of almost like a deer with the headlights. What would I do if I don't have that solid ground of what's right and wrong, what's moral or moral, or all of that? How can I choose? What would I choose? What if I choose wrong? What if I hurt somebody? And the fear is so strong that people a lot of times run away. They go back to their points of view. They contract. They, they're like, no, 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 no. I had that tiny little comfortable life. And that's not the wrongness. And some people resist going back. They resist their life. So they choose something that's still not a choice. Because we can choose based on the rightness, alignment and agreement with what other people choosing or what's right, what's good or from resistance and reaction to what is right, good, or what right choice is, neither of that is choice. Remember what I was talking about in the first part when my mom didn't want me to become a doctor. I still became a doctor out of resistance. It wasn't my choice. It was my resistance to choosing it. I wonder what would I have chosen. Well, actually, I 
do kind of have an inkling because in college I was so in love with art and even in high school even before that I, I did have a talent uh, because after I quit medicine I became an artist I started painting sculpting I actually became um, I, I did the degree associate in fine arts uh, from a local college and was doing about like six or seven years of ceramics. So I might have gone into art if I didn't go through the resistance and reaction. The other part was when I was in college, I loved history of art. But then there was a point of view that you cannot make money with history of art, which was an interesting point of view. And that brings me to another tool of access being an allowance, being an interesting point of view, meaning that you just choose your point of view. Everything is just an interesting point of view. So you choose looking from the right, you're looking from the left. Hmm, interesting point of view from here. I have this interesting point of view, but then I might go around and choose another point of view and look from another point of view and look from another point of view. And that's when I actually have a perspective of everything. Then I'm aware of what's in front of me. And that's when I have a full choice. Not when I have only one sided, oh, this is the right way of looking at that. Would you let go of that right now? Would you allow yourself at least for the next 10 seconds, choose what works for you, not from resistance and reaction, not from alignment and agreement, but just from choice. There is a wonderful tool I love, and that probably will be our tool for the week, to play with 10 seconds increment of choice, choosing in 10 seconds. Because you cannot fix any point of view if you're choosing that point of view for 10 seconds, right? Let me illustrate that. Think of somebody you don't like. Maybe hate. Maybe somebody that hurts you. Somebody you're upset with. Just literally. Pick that person that, uh, uh, that you cannot stand. So for the next 10 seconds, just indulge yourself. Because you might have judged yourself wrong for hating this person. You might have judged yourself right for hating that person. But for the next 10 seconds, just indulge and hate him or her. Um, despise her, him. Be upset. Okay, 10 seconds is up. Now allow yourself to be grateful for that person because you learned something probably, right? Or wrong. Just be grateful. Okay, 10 seconds is up. Now be upset again. And hate down, upset. Ooh. And now just allow yourself to be grateful. Thank them. Like, look at them and thank them for all the lessons you've learned. Now hate them again. Literally, like, hate, 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 or upset. And I'm not talking about forgiveness. Just, just be upset with them. And now be grateful. Now be upset again. And now you allow yourself to be grateful that they were or are in your life, that you're learning, that you're growing, that you can choose something different. Now choose to be very right about hating them. <laughs> Cannot do that, can you? 
Yeah, it's much more neutral right now. It's really, when we indulge ourselves, when we don't resist being right, being wrong, we allow ourselves to be ourselves. And I did hate versus gratitude because hate and love are the same programming. Gratitude is one of the highest vibrations. It's a space of being. Gratitude is when you can love even somebody who hurts you, when you can be grateful for anything, for being right, for being wrong, for because there is something you can be grateful for. And by the way, um, tomorrow, Rachel Silver and I are doing a free Zoom. It's, I think, going to be uh, also in Facebook Live and in some other states. Uh, uh, in might be, um, but it's on Zoom, I believe, where we will be talking about gratitude. How with gratitude, there is no rightness. With gratitude, there is no wrongness. It is space of being, space of where everything is possible. It's a space of creation, space of magic. Look at the space of gratitude. Just look at that energy, sense that energy. And now sense the energy of being right. Because right is a lie. There is no absolute right. There is no absolute wrong. Because as I said, according to the culture, according to belief system, according to what works in the moment, even those things that people say, oh, that's totally wrong, like murder, like killing. Is it right or is it wrong? Yeah, when you're just killing somebody out of nowhere, people judge it as wrong. When people kill with a country or in self-defense, that's the right way to do it. But is it? What if it's just a choice that makes it? And what if you can be grateful for whatever people choose? If they choose to kill, if they choose to torture. But at the same time, what if you chose different? What if you chose not to be in that energy? Not from the rightness and wrongness, because as long as you in that right and wrong, you still keep creating and recreating that energy. And we'll talk more after the break because it's time for our last third break of the show. And um, when we return, we'll talk more about letting go and being total allowance after we come back. And you've been listening to Creating Abundance with Ease with myself, Dr. Helen Gidlovich on Inspired Choices Network. We will be right back. Many of us live our lives based on karma, on the past, and all the unfinished business in our lives. What would you choose if you did not have karma, or if you could choose what you desired instead? By tuning into Creating Abundance with Ease radio show with Dr. Helen Gitlovich, you'll receive tools and inspiration you can use to create the abundance in your life. You are an infinite being with infinite choices. Are you ready to have ease with creating abundance? Listen for Creating Abundance with Ease radio show every Wednesday at 12 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 11 a.m. Central, 10 a.m. Mountain, and 9 a.m. Pacific on InspiredChoicesNetwork.com. This is the Creating Abundance with Ease show with Dr. Helen Gitlovich. To participate in the program, Join our live studio audience in our chat room at InspiredChoicesNetwork.com. 
You can also make the choice to ask or comment by email by sending to helen.g at att.net. Now, back to the program. Welcome forward, everyone. I'm Dr. Helen Gitlevich on Creating Abundance with Is. And today our show topic is Who is Right? And before we went on breaks, the first three parts that we did so far, we did talk about that fixed points of view of being right and wrong and resistance to that a lot of times creates what we have in, in our lives. Our point of view creates our reality. And we have only, I think, just 10 minutes left or less in our show. I just wanted to invite you to a couple of other classes that's coming up. Um, next week, I'm starting um, book clubs in Russian. And you can find out more on my website. Also, next week, uh, the podcast will be in Russian, the same topic, who is right, Ktopra. And uh, we will talk more possibly about the same, but in Russian, but maybe some other points of view come up. And um, also tomorrow, there is going to be a free Zoom uh, at 11 o'clock. Uh, Central Standard Time with Rachel Silber, where we will be talking about gratitude beyond Thanksgiving. Um, because tomorrow is American holiday of Thanksgiving, where we are actually grateful for be here, being here and being free. And we'll talk more about holidays and go beyond right and wrong, go beyond judgment, go beyond everything that solid that stops us from creating the joy and happiness in our lives. And again, it's going to be tomorrow at 11. It's totally free. Um, you can sign up on access webpage or um, just uh, let us know either Rachel or me uh, personally through Facebook messenger, Instagram messenger, or um, Telegram. I, I'm like on pretty much most social media, except I am still resisting to TikTok. And people told me that it might be a good idea to go on TikTok. Um, not very active in some social, I'm more active in some and less active in the others. But you can always get hold of me, um, especially through the messengers or WhatsApp. And magic is everywhere. That's my invitation to you. Um, there is going to be a three-day body class in Buffalo Grove. I might also come uh, to Ukraine with body class. We're still uh, looking at logistics with uh, traveling with COVID. And just allow yourself to go beyond right and wrong, into the gratitude, into the joy, into the ease, into what creates your life instead of destroys your life? How much of being right or wrong destroys you? There was an old tool in Access, um, not sure if it's still, it's probably in uh, reference material, but recognizing that even if we decided that we are wrong, the other person is also right. Because from their point of view, they're right. So a lot of times it's easy to say, I'm sorry, I'm wrong, you're right. You're right, I'm wrong, you're right, I'm wrong, you're right, I'm wrong. To diffuse the situation, you don't have to change your mind. You don't have to kind of like say, yes, you're right. It's more about recognizing that they're right in their point of view and you're right in point of view and being an interesting point of view. The tool of interesting point of view is amazing when you start using it because it's not about being right. It's not about being wrong. It's just about being in total allowance of what is in front of you. So think of any uh, point of view you have that you've decided is very right and somebody else tells you you're wrong. 
So interesting point of view. I have this interesting point of view. We can do it together. Interesting point of view. I have this interesting point of view. Interesting point of view. They have this interesting point of view. Interesting point of view. I have this interesting point of view that they have this interesting point of view. Interesting point of view. I have this interesting point of view. Interesting point of view. They have this interesting point of view. Interesting point of view. I have this interesting point of view that they have this interesting point of view. How do you feel right now? A little bit lighter? I can't hear you, but I'm kind of like getting that you're a little lighter. And the more you do that, the more you be that, the more things open up. And you can find out more about tools of access, uh, about Akasha Cracker that I do uh, on my website, creatingabundancewithease.com. You can also uh, sign up for my YouTube channel that has a lot of different video webinars, clearings um, on Creating Abundance with Ease YouTube channel. SoundCloud is under my personal name, Helen Gitlevich. Um, iTunes podcast is also under Inspired Choices Network as well as Creating Abundance with Ease, also under my name. You can search. Um, there are also a lot of different clearings on SoundCloud. There are a lot of free stuff on Facebook, Facebook Lives that I've done on my Creating Abundance with Ease page that you can like, and then you get um, announcements about new Facebook Lives. Also, there are a couple of groups that have been created, like Being You Without Hiding, where Rachel Silber and I did 100 days of out-of-control clearings. And then we did beyond that, we did calls on gratitude. We did a lot of free Facebook Lives that last anywhere from a few minutes to um, I think the longest one was close to an hour uh, or over an hour. And we have only a couple of more minutes left in this podcast. Um, if you're watching it now or later, it doesn't matter. Just allow yourself to stay expanded. Allow yourself to stay in a space of gratitude. Allow yourself to see where are you functioning from the rightness or the wrongness. And by the way, a lot of times, all of us at some point decided that we're wrong and trying to prove that we're not. How many of you are actually in that space? What if you're not wrong, no matter what you did? What if the mistakes that you've decided are mistakes are just choices that created more awareness in your life? And they were not wrong. They were not right. They were just choices that allowed you to be in this moment of time, this person, this persona that choosing more right now and creating more in your life what if without those mistakes quote unquote i'm doing air quotes if you're just listening not watching me um it's what if it's not a wrongness what if it was what created your life as it is right now i'm so grateful for you coming here and please Join my email list. Um, you can do that by going to my website, Creating Abundance with Ease, and downloading um, the free expansion meditation that we did today, a little different variation. Love you all. Thank you. And see you next week at 11 o'clock Central Standard Time or whatever time is there. And next week, impression. Thank you for choosing to listen to Creating Abundance with Ease radio show. Dr. Helen Gitlovich will return next Wednesday at 12 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 11 a.m. Central, 10 a.m. Mountain, and 9 a.m. Pacific on InspiredChoicesNetwork.com.
We hope you'll join us. Until then, have fun using the tools of the week in your life and start creating magic in your life and your body.